Just keep holding this down. I could be getting shorter at the waist. Get quiet on the set. No, I'm sorry. Jeez. That's so particular. That's our producer. So you're not being you're not used to being told what to do when uh, when you're at your house. With over 1,200 plus entertainment industry guests and almost six million viewers, live from the Pepper J Production Studios in Hollywood, California, it's the Actors E Chat Show. Welcome to Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Rick Drayson, and today we're going to have a pretty crazy show because I have a guest who I've known for quite a while. Uh, we could actually be bookends, and he's a, an actor. He does stunts. He's a, a pro wrestler. He's a bodybuilder. He's a weightlifter. But more than that, he's my friend, and he's an all-around good guy, and I think the world of him. I'm really happy to have Paul Vincent. Hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Well, you know, Paul, I called you on here for a reason, because I figured that we're so much alike, we'd have a lot to talk about, right? Right, right, right. right. Okay. Uh, Paul's been around a long time. He's, he's done a lot of stuff in, in this world, a lot of unique things, and uh, uh, he's been through a lot of stuff, uh, not too good things, and he's always had a smile on his face, and we talk about this a lot. Your, your attitude is just always good. Well, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's it's um, you know, it's what gets you through everything. You know, you just gotta get, just keep your good attitude, and everything else, you know, just happens. Well, you're right. I mean, it's 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 very easy to be negative because so many people are. But I mean, you've you've uh, you've had serious injuries. Yes, I have. Yeah. Um, you started out as an Olympic uh, Olympic wrestler. Olympic wrestler. I wrestled for the United States World Team. I made the team twice. Uh, Two-time national champion. And. Uh, um, yeah, that was a, a real highlight of my career, without a doubt. Where did that take you? Well, that took me to uh, the power plant out in Atlanta for the WCW when I got back from Romania after taking fourth in the world. Paul Orndorff uh, was in contact with my sports agent in La Jolla down in San Diego, California. And they brought me into uh, the uh, WCW. McMahon was telling my agent if I came back with a gold medal. McMahon would have taken me. Now, this this is Vince McMahon from WWE. It is, yeah. Paul Orndorff was with WWE. D yeah, and then he... Uh, then he switched to WCW. That's right. He took over WCW, the power plant right. over there. Um, you you were there how long? I was only there for a short time, less than seven months. And uh, what happened is my sports agent's assistant knew a talent agent up in Los Angeles, and they sent up some of the my wrestling pictures up there to him. And they decided that they wanted to bring me on, so uh, they gave me a call. When they first called me, I thought it was a bunch of BS. You know, an agent in Los Angeles wants to take me on and be an actor. Yeah, like, right, sure. Yeah. Well, so, there's not enough actors. <laughs> exactly. So I just ignored it and blew it off. You know, I was happy out in the yeah. land. I mean, you know, I was, I was doing what I set out as a goal of mine to do, and that was to be a pro wrestler and make some money. Because you certainly don't make any money as an amateur wrestler. <laughs> no, and you don't really make any money as a pro unless you're at the top of the heap. That's it. You know, you take a year through the school if you make it there, and then, and then you go on the circuit. But, uh, yeah, it's a tough going the first couple of years, no doubt about it. Um, let's let them know what kind of training you had to go through. Because everybody seems to think it's something you get into, and they see the glitz and glamour, and you're going to be a superstar. And <laughs> you got your outfit, and you've got your music all ready to go, and you're just in the ring, and that's it. But it's not like that at all. No, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, when I got back from Romania and I was on my way out to Atlanta, I kept thinking, oh, man, there's going to be a lot of attitude. There's going to be... You know, this, uh, oh, who's this guy coming in as a real wrestler, coming into, uh, you know, uh, entertaining wrestling. And, and I was thinking the same thing. I didn't know much about uh, the, the pro wrestling part of it. I didn't follow it much. I just knew that, you know, that was an avenue that I had to take to get where I really wanted to go. And that was, you know, eventually into Hollywood, obviously. So uh, um, when I got out there, I couldn't believe the, the, the reception that I got from all the other wrestlers out there. Everybody was so nice. But I'll tell you, it didn't take long before I got a complete respect for all those guys out there. Because it's not just entertaining wrestling. I mean, you really have to be in shape. And the one thing that you learn out there that is really good for Hollywood is that, you know, your whole life, I played uh, Division One college football at San Jose State. And uh, I was a running back, so I got hit a lot. You know, you get hit just about every play, obviously. 
But, you know, you're always taught to protect yourself, you know, um, in, in contact sports. Right. Whereas in pro wrestling, it's just the opposite where you have to put all your trust in your partner. And so there is no protecting yourself. You have to take those hits. This, this <laughs> and that's is, the difference. This is basically a relationship <laughs> between you and the other person. And a lot of people don't, don't realize that. They think you're going to go out and you're going to kill one another. But basically, you're putting your life in this other person's hands. When they slam you off the top rope, they have to protect yeah. you. When they body slam you, they have to protect you. Whatever <laughs> they do, they have to make sure they set you down so you don't get hurt. But yeah, it's got to look real. And this is a very hard thing to do because you have to separate your mind from your body. Listen, if you're married, that guy better be as close to you as your wife. Or closer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or closer. Because you, exactly what you just said. Yeah. Your health, your, your career, everything is in the hands of your partner when you get out on that. And it, when you get into that ring, no question about How it. How many of the people that you were there with actually made it? Um, believe it or not, um, I was out there the same time that Batista got out there. Right. And what's funny is Batista came in, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, and I'm sure he doesn't. But when he got out there, when I was there, he was 190 pounds. He came in with the background of martial arts. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, everybody that was out there didn't really think that he was going to make it. Because there he is. He didn't, yeah, he there he is. Great shoulders. Yo, he get, you know what's funny is I'm flipping through the channels, doing channel surfing about four years later. And I see him, and I was like, wait a minute. That's the same guy? <laughs> yeah, exactly, because Connie was like, what, 270 pounds Well, at this he's point? not even involved anymore. He's doing films. Yeah. Well, I think he's doing films, and then he went back to wrestling. Well, he had Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. And now he's doing James Bond. Oh, is he? Yeah, he doesn't, oh, good have, for him. He doesn't have to go back. The business is good to, to, uh, to a certain point. It'll get you out there and get your, your fame. And then you have ancillary products off that where you can make some money. But it's not long-lasting for, for anybody that you know either because you, you get injured so quick. By the time you're 40 years old, it's like, okay, I've had enough. Well, that's, a, that's the problem with uh, <clears throat> you know, athletes is our careers are so short as far as competitiveness right. and competing because it is it's a brutal business i mean it's physical uh, any contact sport i mean it's just it's really tough and you got these young guys coming in every year that are faster bigger stronger yeah uh it's hard to compete and and also the training that you went through um and and you know that people ask you about it say well i can do that it's <laughs> really it's a lot harder than actually getting them doing a match because you're going through the paces every day and getting slammed every day and hit and clotheslines and bumping and bumping and bumping and bumping and you, at the end of the day your body's just been it's like you've been through well dallas page just said uh, uh uh, a wrestling match is like a car accident. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much like a car accident. You, you've been yeah. hit and um, you've been bounced around a lot. Right. But you, only, you don't get hit just once. You get, no. you get hit for about an hour or, for, or a half hour, yeah. depending on the match. And the same thing in a football game. I mean, you're, you know, yeah. that's uh, 60 minutes of, uh, you know, of full contact collision. Exactly. When you left WCW, where would you go? I went straight to Hollywood. Uh, the uh, talent agent up in Hollywood brought me on. It was player's talent. They handle a, just a lot of athletes, right? And uh, I was fortunate enough to start working, and uh, and and I kept working all these years. And you continued your uh, your training, weight training. Oh, of course. You know what's funny is I'm I, God, I don't know what I don't know if it's pride in myself or just the way that I push myself uh, naturally throughout my whole career. Um, but I train the same way I did when I was 25 years old. Mm -hmm. I power train. I power lift. I still do. Heavy, heavy deads. I still do heavy squats, heavy bench, and I, I'm a strong believer in power. You're 27 now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, wanna, I wish I was. I want to touch on a subject because we're going to do this, and then we're going to go on beyond this. But if you don't mind talking about it, when you uh, went to your high school reunion, right? What was it? What were the two things they said about you? You know what's funny is, you know, in your yearbooks. Everybody writes, oh, he's going to be the best financial guy. He's going to be the richest. You know, he's the cutest. This is the cutest couple. And in my yearbook is I was most likely to go to prison or die. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to break for a commercial from our sponsors right now. We're going to come back and talk about that. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Anna Shaw Ray, here to share with you a terrific online gift store, artistore.com. Artistore is an online art colony of completely original and absolutely affordable gifts and fine art. Artistore is particularly fun because it includes many unique and one-of-a-kind gifts, cards, and wall art that you can't get anywhere else. For example, in the gift section, Artistore carries beautiful apparel art ties. Yes, art ties! Ties hand-decorated with jewelry, fringe, beads, and all sorts of stuff. 
animal art ties, art deco ties, music ties, you name it. And best of all, the ties are for both men and women and can be worn well with a pair of jeans or in a tux. Artistore also has inspirational corporate jungle posters. Joe Sabatino likes the poster of the hippo. He put it on his refrigerator to remind him of what not to look like. <laughs> yes, clown art, custom airbrush t-shirts, hand-knit scarves, photography, handmade decorated soaps, and more all on one site, artistore.com. I especially enjoy the artwork by Brennan's section of Artistore. Brennan offers his artwork on note cards, mugs, and wall art, whether it's cocktail ladies, a smoking clown, or Ben and Becky's art for a child's room. Brennan's unique watercolor or pen and ink art will be perfect for the occasion. And when you use the discount code Actors Reporter at checkout, you'll get 10% off your entire Artist Store order. Artistore.com. That's spelled A-R-T-I-S-T-O-R. -T -T That's A-R-T-I-S-T-O-R. -T -T Check it out. You'll be glad you did. Artistore.com for all your unique gift needs. Welcome back to Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Rick Drayson, along with my guest, Paul Vincent. But I want to remind you to go to ActorsReporter.com and you'll see an Actors Discount link right up there on the top that's highlighted. Scroll down and look for all the things that you can get a discount on to help you with your craft, become a better actor, a better performer, and be the best that you can be because you want to be the best that you can be in order to get those jobs and you want to get a discount doing so. So, ActorsReporter.com. Okay, we're back with Paul Vincent, and we were talking about, did we have a chatter question by any chance before we go on to this? Thank you so much, Rick, and welcome all of our chatters to Actors E Chat, the live chat show from Hollywood, California, Monday through Friday. Paul, we have a chatter question from Wisconsin. They would like to know, what nutrition do you think is good to both stay healthy and still lift weights but not try to be a bodybuilder per se? Norms? Well, yeah, you know, God, I am probably the worst person to ask that question because, you know, a lot has to do with genetics. And I'm one of those guys that, you know, I, uh, I uh, eat just about everything and anything other than liver. I can't eat liver. I eat liver. But as far as fast food and kind of I'm a fast food junkie, no question about it. But I do, I'm a, I am a big believer in uh, protein. Um, you know, as an athlete, you know, you don't want to bulk up too much and you carry all that muscle because it affects your uh, cardio. So, uh, you know, that's why I train power more than uh, I try to, you know, be a sculptor and try to be a bodybuilder. I'm, I'm all about power and, and size isn't that important to me uh, as it is power. So, yeah, stick with the protein and just, you know, train. You got to train. Yeah, but you eat just about everything, but you have a good metabolism. I do. That's, and that's part of genetics. That's the whole key. Metabolism yeah, burns yeah, it up. Exactly. Otherwise, you've got to watch your carbs and starches and this and that. So you were the one most likely to go to prison. I was most likely to go to prison or die. And you didn't disappoint them, did you? I did not. No, I did not. In both in both cases. Yes, I know it. And I, let's, let's I, start with the living one first, <laughs> then we'll go to the death. What happened? I did end up going to a federal prison. Uh, I went there for just a year. But listen... I went to the same kind of camp that uh, Martha Stewart went to. Yeah. And so I can't really... Did she cook for you? She did not, <laughs> no. I tried to get The Rock to, though. Yeah, okay. He was my little bitch in there. Because but... <laughs> he was there when I was there, you know. No, I'm kidding. He wasn't there. But uh, I was in federal prison for a year. I did a white-collar crime. Um, uh, I'll get into it a little bit. I... Uh, I had this Mercedes in sight. I really wanted it. I had a couple other cars. I had the money, but I just didn't have the credit. So I used my brother's Social Security. This is when I was younger. This isn't like last year or 10 years ago. I used my brother's Social Security number to get the car. I was making payments and, you know, I was, had insurance. I was doing everything right. But the bank found out about it, and they said, well, you need to bring that car back. And I already had so much money invested in the car. I said, no, I'm not bringing it back. And he goes, well, we're going to find it. And this is where my, this is my mind. I looked at him. I had a suit on. I had a blonde mohawk, bleached out mohawk. I had earrings in both ears. And I'm 230 pounds, and I'm looking at him across the table, and I go, you find that car. I go, you'll find Jimmy Hoffa. Scared the holy crap out of him. The next thing I know, the FBI is knocking on my door because I scared him so bad that he thought, oh, man, this guy's going to do something to me. So the, they pressed charges on me. Um, they 
didn't they didn't give me a bail or anything. They just told me to appear in court. So I appeared in court and uh, the same suit and the blonde hair. I uh, no, okay. <laughs> no. Yes, Your Honor, I did it. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I did it. Whatever. <laughs> what are you gonna do the about it? The thing is, the thing is, okay, you made a mistake, but you went to prison camp. Yeah. And your job was to. I got assigned to the weight pile because <laughs> I was in all the muscle magazines because I was the spokesperson for Ultimate Orange. If you guys remember Ultimate Orange, okay. this is how long ago this this took. It, t it took a long time for the court proceedings and everything. So now you, I'm kind of dating it to where you, now you have an idea of where I was where I was when I went to prison. I was the spokesperson for Ultimate Orange, so I was already in all the muscle magazines. So when I got there, I was already a little bit of a celebrity right. because you know. Muscle magazines in prison yeah, are yeah, yeah. huge. That's, that's the biggest thing going. And so they assigned me to the weight pile, mm -hmm. and when I got down there, it was just a, it was exactly what it was, a weight pile. So I turned it around and turned it into a Gold's Gym. <laughs> put posters up, reorganized. I put everything. posters in it. I got guys on the uh, commercial, on the uh, construction crew to bring me down housing, mirrors, those door mirrors yeah. for housing. Yeah. And so, uh, I, yeah, I set it all up. I organized all the weights. I'd send all the stuff up to metal shop and have them weld everything. And I painted everything and fixed everything. And, oh, yeah, it was great. It so was when you nice. left, they didn't want you to leave? No, 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 no. They were trying to, uh, they were trying to uh, violate me so I could stay longer. It had been another crime on <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> That's So it's, you know, I mean, I know you very well. I know you're not that type of guy anyway. And we all make mistakes. So yeah. Big deal. Um, after that, you, you, you tell us about how you basically died. Actually, I've died a few times. My first uh, really close uh, call was uh, in college. I was uh, playing football at San Jose. Um, it was, uh, we had two games left in the season. I got into a fight downtown San, uh, San Francisco. I was one of, this was up in the Bay Area, obviously. And I got into a fight down there, and I cut my main artery and bicep in half and severed it. And, uh, I, was, and I kept fighting. That was my problem is you get that adrenaline going, and geez, I kept fighting. And so, uh, when, and, and when I got up, blood was, you know, when that main artery goes, you know, blood was flowing everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, it's like what happens to our water flows here in LA when the sewer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. So they, uh, so I tried to drive myself to the hospital. Thank God my girlfriend was with me. Got about a block down the road, she says, and I passed out at the wheel. So she drove the rest of the way to the hospital. And, you know, I mean, kind of, you know, thank God the hospital was so close. Um, and so they got me in there, nine units of blood and 13 hours of surgery Jeez. to bring that thing back together. And the, and the doctor told my girlfriend at the time, she, he says, if you would have stopped for one red light, he wouldn't be here. So that was the, my closest uh, call. And what's funny is I showed up, you know, I was in the hospital for a week. And I came back and I had all these staples and stitches in my arm. And uh, when I got there, my coach was like, what the hell have you been? Of course, I'm in a half cast, you know? Yeah, yeah. And all this. And he goes, what the hell? So I told him what happened, and he's like, oh, you're an idiot. You've been in the hospital a few times, and you've, drove, yeah. you've driven yourself over there. And then you'll call me or somebody, can you come pick me up? Because yeah. they won't let me leave unless I have a ride. <laughs> you're right. And then someone picks you up, and they leave you off at the end of the block, and your car's parked around the corner, and you go home. Yeah, and here's a, here's a couple <laughs> things that I've done. I was in the hospital once, and they did surgery on this arm. And... Uh, so I parked my Mercedes out front, and it's all blacked out windows. So, and I parked right out front of the hospital because I knew that nobody was going to be there to pick me up. So I was telling the doctor, they go, do you have somebody to pick you up? Because after surgery, you know, they're not going to let you drive. Yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, my, uh, my wife's going to come get me. And so, uh, and, and of course, I don't have any arrangements. So they wheel me out. So I, I, I pretend that she's calling me on the phone. So I pick up my cell phone. And I go, yeah, she's on her way. She's downstairs now. So they wheel me downstairs in the, in the, uh, in the um, wheelchair. And I go, oh, there's my car right there. There she is. So they go, okay, okay. So they watch you go to the car. So I'd go jump in the passenger seat and then wait for the nurse. To, and then I'm jumping in my car. And then I go over to the driver's seat and I drive myself home. Oh, that's funny. Oh, my God. I'm puking now out the, because of the, the pain medicine that I'm on. And I'm puking out the door. And I barely get home. And the, oh, my God. I'm, and I remember one time when I was hosting trucks out in Tennessee, I drove myself home. Oh, my God. I was running over curbs. And I, well, I was out of my mind. And so uh, when I finally got home, I laid down on the couch and passed out. When I woke up, I was in a big pool of blood because it, it, somehow it had opened up whatever yeah. the, the surgery that they did in my abdomen. And so, the, uh, um, so I'm laying in a pool of blood on my, my couch, and I'm like, 
I was thinking, okay, you idiot, you could have bled to death in your own house. You had a, an incident where you passed out, on, they gave you something, they over-medicated you? Yeah, I was in the hospital for supposedly a rotator cuff, it turned out that it wasn't a rotator cuff, but they kept postponing the surgery because they didn't really know what was going on with right. me. They thought it was a rotator, and so they kept doing all these tests and that, but they kept medicating me, medicating me. And by the third day, I'm so hallucinating. I'm literally talking to myself in my hospital bed. And, and friends told me that I'd called them on my cell phone and like, I'm being kidnapped. I'm being held. For, you know. And my friends are like, you're out of your mind. And uh, finally, um, uh, they called a code gray on me because I remember the nurse coming in to give me another shot. And I just remember getting up and, and throwing her against the wall and taking the syringe from her hand. And now I'm standing there with the syringe, and next thing I know, I got, all, I got blue uniforms in front of me and then, uh, and then uh, nurses around me. And I'm standing there, and, I just, and I'm looking, and I'm like, come on, come on. And then I just remember looking on my left, and I'm thinking, okay, this is the first nurse I'm taking out. And then I'm going to take out the right one, and then I'm going after the two in front of me because you're assessing. Was this a scene from Cops? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. This is. The, I'm really assessing this while I'm like highly medicated out of my mind. I'm really thinking this out. Yeah. Next thing I know, both hands, and then I'm up off the ground, and I'm kicking and screaming. And then I don't remember anything. They put me in a an in induced coma, and then I woke up like God. I don't know. Three weeks later, um, and um, I was telling my doctors. I remember I had a call back. The, that following Monday, so I was I was telling my doctor, I go, I go, go, what day is it? And he goes, oh, it's Friday. And I go, oh, great. I go, God, I can make it to my callback on Monday. <laughs> and he just starts laughing. He goes, Paul, he goes, what day do you think it is? And I go, well, you just told me it's Friday. And he goes, yeah, Friday the 29th or 28th or whatever yeah. it was. And I went in on the 3rd. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you ever get the callback? <laughs> <laughs> Missed that callback. <laughs> you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg, though, because there's yeah. more to Paul than you really realize. When, after all is said and done, <laughs> the man had failing kidneys. Yeah, you know what's funny is when I played uh, college football, steroids were legal. Yeah. So uh, we, had a, we had a steroid doctor, which every college football team does. Right. And so uh, uh, we were prescribed, we were put on steroids, and uh, we were monitored. We had our blood tested every month. And I remember them, I remember the doctor back in college telling me, he goes, Paul, he goes, in 20 years you're going to need a kidney transplant. And, of course, back then, you're like, oh, man, I'm not even going to be around in 20 years. Well, 20 years? I'll be dead by then. Come on, that's an old man. Yeah. And then, sure enough, 20 years on the year, Yeah. I went in for, I had kidney failure and went in, and they put me on dialysis. And you were on dialysis how long? Six long, brutal years. I was in there for five hours every other day. They, you know, most people are on for three hours, but I, you know, I went in, uh, I went in at 245. That's my biggest. I was in it when I finally, when the finally, kidney finally went, I was 245 pounds. And uh, so they had put me on dialysis for longer, longer, longer. So finally it ended up five hours a day, every other day for six years. And you were doing auditions then? I was, I was still working. I was still auditioning. As a matter of fact, when I was checking myself into the hospital, when they were, I was on set, shooting a Toyota commercial, when my doctor calls and he goes, I don't care what you're doing, he goes, drop whatever you're doing, get to the hospital right away, we're waiting for the emergency. Right. And I was like, so I, looked, so I asked one of the ADs, I said, hey, how much longer are we gonna shoot? And she goes, oh, about five more hours. And I go, ah, great, let's close it up. So, <laughs> so we wrap it up, I drive home, and of course, uh, we drive, my wife's waiting for me, and she goes, we gotta go right now, so we went to the hospital. I'm checking in, and my agent calls me, and he goes, you just booked Home Depot. So I look at the nurse and I go, hey, I got to be out of here by Sunday night because I'm shooting Monday. This is on a Thursday or Friday. Yeah. And she goes, oh, you're not going anywhere. And I go, well, I'll tell you what. I go, I'm not checking myself into the hospital until you guarantee me I'm out of here Sunday night. Yeah. So sure enough, she goes, she called my doctor. And my doctor says, yeah, he'll be out Sunday night. So sure enough, uh, they, put the, they put the stint in. Um, I had a little scar about three inches long on my wrist where they inserted the stint up in the arm. And then uh, I, I shot for two days with Home Depot. I was there Monday morning on my call time and shot Tuesday. And, every, and then I had a big old tube running out of my neck where they had to hook up for the dialysis. And you had that for all those years? I had that for, yeah. You had the one on your arm. It looked like a garden hose underneath your, your skin. Let me tell you, this was a, this, they finally, because it just kept collapsing, they finally took the, the artery out of a cow's neck, yeah. which is probably 
pretty big. big. Yeah, bigger yeah. than bigger than my finger, right. and and my ring finger is a fifteen. So you can imagine how big that was. Yeah. I mean, it was so big that I'd ride my motorcycle, and it would literally, honest to God, flop in the wind. You could see it sticking out of the skin. <laughs> the the yeah. thing was, on auditions, yeah. you, you covered it up. Yeah, on auditions, I covered up. And then when I'd, go, when I'd get on set, I remember people were asking me all the time. they go, Paul, what's wrong with your arm? God, what, what is that? But I never let anybody know that I was ever on dialysis. I never let anybody know I was sick. Yeah. I would just tell them, I go, oh, you know, that's just from powerlifting. And I, and I, just, I have the starting one like that right there. Yeah. No, same, there you go. The same thing. But yeah, um, I never want anybody to feel sorry for me or or, or look at me any differently than than yeah. what I was. Well, this is the point I was trying to make. You've gone through all this stuff, and you always <laughs> had this smiling attitude <laughs> that everything is okay. And you know what? When you think that way, everything is okay. It just seems to fall out and, and work for you, and, and you get more and you get more. And we're going to be right back after a word from our sponsors. We have so much to talk about. <laughs> The great thing about NL Media is the one-stop shop. We are soup to nuts. We have writers, directors, producers, animators, motion graphics artists, editors, videographers, musicians, all under one roof. And we are a boutique creative house where we actually do the creative at much more affordable price and have the staff in-house to execute it professionally. My name is John Palacio. My name is Luz Montez. My name is Paul Robinson. I am Jesse Cervantes. I'm Curtis Peel. My name is Ben Joran. One of the most common questions we have from potential clients is how does it work? What happens when you engage in now media to create a video, a marketing campaign? It first starts with, you know, obviously having the phone conversation with the client, brainstorm with them to come up with a really good concept and a really good idea to push whatever they're trying to do to the next level. Only with that in mind can we really try to tailor a concept and a script for their exact audience that fits in with their branding and the message they want to tell. We'll storyboard it out, get a real rough idea uh, of what we want to do. We'll then present the client with a couple of options, different ways that we could go with some of the things that we've come up with. And they'll say, this is good, and then we'll come back and we'll start animating that or designing it or editing it. Our clients are generally, you know, like to be really hands-on, and we'd like to hear from you kind of all along the board. There's no surprises. What we like to do with every partner is we actually create a page on the NNL website so they can give feedback, and that way, when the time we get to the final product, you know, usually there's not a whole lot more revisions to do because they, we've already been working together the whole time. The big difference is that, that real personal creative touch. We have a creative group that can execute that vision, whether it's animation, video, motion, graphics, and do so with some unique creative that is custom tailored to that business. You know, dream it up. It's video. It's magic. It can happen. Welcome back to Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Rick Grayson, along with uh, my friend, Paul Vincent, who's an actor, stuntman, pro wrestler, bodybuilder, man of all trades, and he's actually a plumber, too, right? I am a journeyman plumber, a yes, general yeah. contractor. Yeah. Not a general contractor, a plumbing contractor. Yeah. It's a pipe dream. That is. <laughs> and I've laid some pipe. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have. <laughs> In many ways. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Sweet Tooth. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sweet Tooth. Uh, anybody that's familiar with Twisted Metal, the video game, uh, it's Sony's longest running video game. It's been around since 1996. And they uh, came up with this idea two, maybe two years ago, about making a real movie and then incorporating the game into the real movie using real characters. And fortunately for me, I went in on an audition and I booked the lead role for Sweet Tooth. And what's the, what's the character about? Character's a psycho killer clown who drives around a nice cream truck killing people not much of a stretch for you uh, <laughs> no not at all <laughs> no really i've never killed anybody no but it's coming about some of these days i'm sure <laughs> i hope not <laughs> no, you never know unless they deserve it let's talk about the accent you had on the set yeah 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 you know what's funny is uh you know every set you go on there's always something that happens that's memorable for yeah. that particular you know, regardless of what it is or how simple it is sure. or even how, and the more difficult, actually, the more fun it is for guys like us and uh, the more exciting we get, you know, the more excited we get about it. But on Sweet Tooth, they brought in this actress 
who was supposed to have stunt experience. And unfortunately, you know, for some uh, actors or actresses, they tend to exaggerate some of their experience as far as stunt work. And yes, you know, they don't know what they're doing. Exactly. And you know, as a stuntman, anybody out there that's a stuntman, real, you know, it's like pro wrestling, you know, you got to rely on that person. You got to know what you're doing. To know what they're doing as well. And, uh, and one of the scenes, if you watch the movie, you'll see the scene where she picks up the stairs and I kneel down to her and we're face to face and she rams the scissors into my, uh, through my mask into the eye and that's where Sweet Tooth loses his eye. Well, that wasn't too far from the truth. She literally went through the mask and caught me right above the eye into the eyebrow and, uh, and uh, cut it open. So when I jump back, I was standing there, and I didn't, you know, and they were talking about resetting and let's reshoot that. And I could just feel the blood dripping down inside my mask. So I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't want to get anybody excited. So I ran upstairs to the, um, to the uh, uh, wardrobe and, and makeup, and uh, my special effects guy, Ian, and I told him, I said, I, you know, I think we have a problem. And he goes, what's that? And I, so I lifted up the mask, and here's all this blood uh, coming down. So I just told him, I said, well, let's just clean it up and super glue it. And let's not let it, let's not tell anybody. Let's just get it done so we can get back down there and start yeah. shooting. Well, by the time we uh, started cleaning it up, everybody had already found out what's going on. So uh, everybody comes running up and, you know. And, uh, did they do that fire and post? Yeah, they did. As a matter of fact, how cool is that? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I mean, uh, the special effects in this is great. I mean, anybody that hasn't seen it yet, you know, uh, you know, I really strongly yeah, I mean, suggest the whole set looks good. Strongly suggest you know go out and uh, and check it out, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Really, it's a it's so a really it's a pretty good big movie. Deal. Oh, it was huge. I mean, uh, you know, what's funny is you know you do something like that, especially with uh, Twisted Metal, mm -hmm. which has been around for years, mm -hmm. and then you know. You know, as an actor, you know, you never try to get your hopes up too high, but when yeah. they start telling you about sequels and that, yeah, you start thinking, oh, man, this could be a really, really good thing. I used to call me every time and say, that's going to do this, that's going to do that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you always hope that it does. Yeah. And then you're on a veil, and we all know what a veil means. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is I, I, was, I was fortunate to have a great uh, agent, which is Joe over at Players Talent. And he taught me a lot of things in the business. One is saving my money uh, and, you know, for those rainy days when, yeah. you know, you're always going to have a dry spell. I don't care how good of an actor you are, how big you are. That's true. There's going to be dry spells. And, you know, it's always good to have uh, uh, money in the bank so that you can, uh, you know, get yourself through those tough times. But he also told me things about, you know, don't get excited. You know, don't, you know, uh, when you're on a veil, you know, it's, you know, don't take anything personal if you don't book something. And uh, you don't get overexcited until the ink is on the paper. Well, you and I have been on a lot of stuff together. Yeah, you know, we, did we a, have. We did a Budweiser commercial together. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and when we go out, you know, they say, oh, you come back for a veil. And you go back, and there's more guys than there were the first time. Yeah. <laughs> they have those guys in a veil and all new ones with you. And so you think, what's going on here? Why did I even come back on this? They haven't really known what they want. And then sometimes it boils down that you do get it. And then sometimes someone gets it completely opposite of you. <laughs> you know, having a bald head and a beard is uh, can be a plus because at one time it was unique and now right. it's almost everybody has it right well you know it's funny as i just shot a promo for the uh the history channel that's unique oh yeah yeah, yeah there you go Kinda, that's, that's yeah. a budweiser spot that was one i did with lou ferrigno though. wow i like that that was good i like that i like the beard very well but yeah go ahead you were saying well i was i was saying you know uh um uh what was i saying you were talking about commercials and bald guys and beards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I just shot a promo for the History Channel's uh, Axemen. And, uh, and it was one segment was Axemen. The other segment was Pawn Stars. The other one was... Uh, um, That's right. Uh, um, um, you um, just did Ameri this. American Pickers. So, I, yeah, we just, ra we just shot this last week. And Rick, um, Rick Harrison from Pawn Stars comes walking there in. There it is. Yeah, oh, there we go. There's the picture. I'm sawing my boss's desk in half of the chainsaw. So Rick comes walking in, and the first thing I say to him is, I go, what? They couldn't find a bald guy with a goatee in Hollywood to <laughs> sit in for you? They had to bring you all the way from Las Vegas? And, of course, he just starts laughing because here I am, bald with a goatee. I don't look a lot like him, but, you know, bald with goatees. There's a, sure. plenty of us in there. Well, you get to, people say, I know someone that's just like you, just bald with a goatee. <laughs> right, 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 right. Oh, I've gone to auditions where I thought I was in an Aryan Nation meeting. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and I've even said that. I go, what is this, Aryan Nation? I know. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty funny. It happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, one thing I get, you know, I got to tell you about actors. You know, one, one piece of advice I'll give to, I'd love to share with actors is, 
you know, you'll go into an and I and I've and I've done this myself, and and I try not to, and I and I get it all the time from other actors. Is God, what am I even doing here? Look at these guys. For me, it's bodybuilding. I'm going there, and these guys are monsters. But I've come to realize that they really don't know what they're looking for. So they'll bring in the smaller guys, and then they'll bring in the big guys, and then it's all up to the client is decide which way they want to mm -hmm. go. So, I mean, for, you know, if you think it's the director or the producer that's making that final choice, no, it's not. It's the, uh, it's the clients. It is the clients. And, and, yeah. and it's like you said, uh, you don't want to be intimidated by the size of the guys if it's bodybuilding. No. Because they could be, want somebody that's not over the top. Right. And, and a lot of times they don't. Yeah. And sometimes you go into a biker uh, audition and right. it's all these guys with long hairs and beards. And, and you, you know, you might be one of two or three guys with bald heads and you're thinking, you know, that, well, the breakdown was long hair and beards and that. But... Buy them. I booked a lot of them, so I mean, you know. Well, especially if you're one of the few bald guys. Yeah. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing with bikers, that for for you people out there that don't understand, we have gone out on a lot of wrestling and biker <laughs> spots and <laughs> bodybuilding over the years, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. when you get to the point with bodybuilding and you get to be my age, <clears throat> and someone calls you and your agent says, "We want to see you over there on four o'clock in speedos <laughs> and oil down," it's not going to happen, no. right? It's not going to happen. No. And then the biker stuff. A lot of guys come in that have never been in the business and they just have the look and they have the Harley and they get hired because they want the bike yeah so when you go out for this and you, and they say do you have a bike if you say no you don't really have a chance of even booking the spot right you know but and a lot has to do with attitude when you're on when you're when you're on camera you know that energy comes through and i mean yeah. god i mean they might just like your energy and say right. god you know the guys may be not perfect right. but god that energy we like that energy well then the other Man. thing the other, this is what progressive oh that's the progressive commercial yeah that's the Actually, we have a couple running. The Progressive, and then we got the uh, the Keurig. Keurig. Uh, Keurig uh, that's, what, that's running. I saw it five times last night on you, Channel 2. Did you? Yes. I figured you'd make enough to take me out to eat. Well, you know what that means if you, for you <laughs> actors out there. Uh, this There's a picture that just popped up. This is from uh, Allison Chains uh, and... Uh, um, and um, uh, what, what, Devaro? I don't know. Oh, David Navarro. Yeah, David Navarro. So listen, they, they liked my voice so much that they brought Perry, who's the lead singer, and Navarro over. And so Navarro goes, okay, I want you there to say is. a couple of things about um, Underground. This is the song, The Underground. And so I said, you know, a couple of things about Underground, and Navarro looks at me and he goes, that's it. And then he, <laughs> he walks away, doesn't say another word. And so his uh, manager uh, tells me, he goes, yeah, Dave really likes your voice. And uh, so we want to use you um, in studio for uh, some some uh, backup stuff on the uh, on the, uh, I on the he's album. Really, he's a really nice guy. Um, he keeps to himself a lot. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't say a whole lot to uh, you know to anybody out his circle. Right. If you're in his circle, I'm sure he's a really nice guy. Wow, who is that well. handsome guy you're sitting with? Uh, my dad. <laughs> 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 Father and son team here. Yeah, yeah. we're bookends. The apple didn't fall too far from the tree. Obviously, the, uh, it didn't it, even it, fall from the tree. What's the thousand ways to die? There was a movie about that. Yeah, a thousand ways to die. You, you know, sometimes you don't make a lot of money oh, on this, shows. This one, I remember yeah. this one. Yeah, where the girl swallows a fish on a boat and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I no, knew that girl. That's actually a really good show, and I'll tell you why yeah. actors. This you never turn a job down as an actor, right. never, because you never know where it's going to lead. Exactly. But the exposure is what we're really looking for as an actor. The money will come, but God, the exposure—that's what you want. The right. that's the most important thing in this business. What'd you weigh there? About two fifty. That is that's one, one of, that's about my biggest, about two forty-five. That was the show Dog Eat Dog. Right. And it was uh, it was a big favorite of theirs because uh, that's how many years ago. God dang, I don't even know. Well, that was post like 12, dialysis. 12 years ago? That's how big I was before dialysis. But the thing is, if I look at that and I look at you now, your face has not changed a bit. You have not even aged. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously. Thank you. Um, <coughs> that, I remember the show. was. I think it had to be at least 12. Well, you know, that's the thing about Hollywood is, God, it's, they put so much pressure on you because these casting directors, they knew you from 15 years ago. Right. But they, when they call you in, they expect that same guy to exactly. walk in the door. And, you know, I go on auditions a lot that I went on auditions for guys years ago. They all come in and they're gray, uh, they're out of shape, and, yep. you, know, they didn't just, they, you know, they just didn't age very well. Right. And, uh, and I'm thinking, God, man, that guy doesn't even look. There's some guys, I swear to God, I didn't even recognize That's a nice shot. when I go on auditions. Oh, thanks. We, um, we had, I'm going to tell you about this one. We had gone on a spot for 
uh, Bissell vacuum cleaners. Bissell, one of right. my best commercial. Yeah, one of your best could have been mine. Uh, <laughs> Paul and I went out for this spot, and it was he and I, and the last guy was Harbill Haggerty, who's now passed away, who was a wrestler with a shaved head. He was in his 70s at the time. We three got called back into Santa Monica, right? Yep. Down by the beach. Yeah, that's it. And Santa Haggerty Monica. was there with his headshot. He says, look at this, Rick. This headshot I've been carrying around for 40 years. It never changed it. It's, it, he was still, it, but he was in his 70s, but it was like 40-year-old headshot. Anyway, we both got called in, and we did the thing, and your voice, I think, was really what put you over for the shot. Actually, you said, I'm Rick Trace, and I probably would have had the Bissell vacuums. But but it was a good spot, and it ran for a long time. Oh, my God, I made You I cleaned up so on that. Good. Yeah. You vacuumed up on that. Here's, here's <laughs> what I was told when I got on set, and this is by Ann Lamb, who was the representative for Bissell. Yeah. She said, Paul, when you came in on the... Because it was the second callback, if you remember. Yes. Because they did they did the audition and they and they didn't didn't find anybody, so they did a second callback. Right. And I went straight to the second callback. I wasn't right. even at the first audition. Uh, shame on you. And so uh, and so when they brought me in, Ann Lamb was telling me on set when we were shooting that we shot that out in Detroit, and she told me she goes, Paul, she goes, you your smile, she goes, when you you just smiled uh, throughout the commercial, and she goes, we really like that. Oh, that's nice. See, yeah, yeah. Your winning smile got you. The well, job. no, no, no. That's well, that's what I mean when you go on cameras. You know, your your attitude and your energy. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you might not be. The, I remember Michael Lean was the casting director for that. Remember? That's right. Yes. And I remember the, the when I came out of there, um, Michael Lean's assistant looked at me and goes. You don't do much, do you? <laughs> like, you sucked. You stunk. And I was thinking, God, I must really stink. What am I doing? And, yeah. and then I book it. Yeah. So go, f go figure. But you get on a lot. I do get out a lot. I have a really good, I'm represented really well with uh, Central Artists now. I'm no longer with Joe. And unfortunately, it was my decision. You know, I felt, I, 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 I lied to him uh, on one set, and I felt so bad about it that I, I knew, or, it's like a girlfriend. When you cheat on him, break up with him because, you know, the relationship will never be the same. Yeah. Well, that's how I felt with Joe and Player's Talent is I lied to him one time. All of the, kind of had him for 12 years, and I lied to him so one time. So basically, if you go across town, there's a whole group of women and agents over there that you lied to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> you left no, them no. all in a vacant lot. Um, no. Do you have a shot of that Keurig uh, commercial? Because it runs all the time, and Paul is on the left-hand side with a group of people. And what's your line? My line is, I'm dying for a uh, herbal tea. Yeah, dying for an herbal I'm tea. I'm dying for an herbal tea. They run, they run that thing a lot. It's a good spot. Yeah. And like I said, I saw it like five times last night on Channel 2. I was watching it, and here it is again. Here it is again. Yeah, and then uh, I think glass glass.com for eyeglasses, that, that's, that should be airing pretty soon. But you know what's funny is, uh, you know, this is another thing that you, they have to keep in mind as an actor. It's just because you shoot something, don't go out and start spending your money and charging no. up your credit cards and that because that might not ever air. Yep. And guess what? You're stuck with those credit card bills, and no ways to pay them. Okay. So you better go get that bartending job or bouncer job or whatever right. you have to do to make ends meet. Prime example. You <laughs> and I worked on a Budweiser commercial oh, called yeah. Real American Heroes. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, yeah, Real American Heroes. And yeah. I had done a Dr. Pepper with Rich Piana at the same time, right before the 9-11. Yeah. And because of that, they couldn't run our commercial because the Real American Heroes were the fire department in New York. Right, exactly. And then we had a really good spot, and in, in, uh, it was a wrestling spot in the Olympic Auditorium. Yeah. And you had pink tights. <laughs> Remember that? And so, and we thought cancer this, awareness for women, yeah, breast cancer awareness. This is going to make a know. lot of money. We thought this is going to make a lot of money. It's going to be a national spot. Later on, it became a uh, a radio spot that said "Real Man of Genius," yeah, instead of "American Heroes." Yeah. And then I happened to get a copy of the commercial we did, and I st I still have it at home, which was a great spot. But they never ran it. That's yeah. a prime example of trying to get something, and you think, okay, you're going to make money. Don't go out and buy something because the money never came. Right, and that's one of the advices that Joe gave me a long time ago. Is he says, "Don't spend your money till you get it." True story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, God, so ma I hear it so many times where guys will go out and just start racking up the credit cards thinking they're going to make all these thousands of dollars. Yeah. Now, now you, you get a lot through your agent, but let's be honest, you do a lot on your own. You, I do. You do your research. Yeah, I do. I, as a matter of fact, I'm... Every day I'm, I'm, I'm pushing myself, I'm hustling, you know, I'm, I'm hustling myself. I mean, that's what you got to do. You got to go out there and sell yourself. You know, it's all about exposure and getting out in front of the right people. And the right people isn't producers and directors and friends that are on a set already. It's casting directors. Those yeah. are the ones you got to get in with because those are the ones that are going to bring you in in front of that camera and then you're going to get seen. Right. Everybody else can't help you. If they say they can, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't believe it. I don't believe it. Do you do a lot of voiceover too? You know, here's here's the problem with with my with my voice. I mean, it's unique in one way, but it's also a little bit too 
too unique. You know what I mean? Right. It would be great for a cartoon character. Yeah. But as far as, you know. Everyday uh, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll be right back after we're from our sponsors, so stay tuned. <laughs> Have you been waiting for a simple and cost-effective alternative to ISDN? No need to wait any longer. Introducing IPDTL from InQuality. IPDTL is a revolutionary yet easy to use web page which uses Chrome to stream audio to and from anywhere on earth. Well, audio quality with IPDTL is equivalent to yet far less expensive than ISDN and with no connection charges. No proprietary hardware or software needed. Just download the Chrome browser and use it. To find out more and to get a free account for your station, go to IPDTL.com. IPDTL is perfect for radio stations and voice talent alike, and can work anywhere in the world. Well, anywhere with the internet, that is. It's here. Go to IPDTL.com and sign up today. IPDTL, the game changer you've been waiting for. IPDTL is an amazing new technology. In fact, go right now to IPDTL.com forward slash AE and there you'll find out how you can get rid of your ISDN, how you can do live television broadcast in full HD and it's very cost effective. We've been using it for pioneering new technology with our broadcast out of Istanbul on Actors eChat. Go there right now. Welcome back to Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Rick Grayson, <laughs> along with Paul Vincent, who's a good friend of mine. And he's a, he's a wrestler, he's a weightlifter, he's an actor, stuntman, uh, he's a, an accomplished plumber. <laughs> you know, I used to have my own plumbing company down in San Diego, PB Plumbing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Pacific Beach Plumbing. Yes. Yeah. So is there anything you'd like to add to what we've talked about? You've done so much, it's just ridiculous, and you're not going to stop here for sure. No, no. Oh, God, I tell you, the, the last thing I ever want to do is retire. You know, I was the host of a show called Trucks, which was on Spike TV. Right. If you remember Power Block, where they had Horsepower, uh, Muscle Car, Extreme 4x4, and Trucks. Well, I was fortunate to uh, get the job as uh, Trucks and uh, hosted that for, we shot that on in Tennessee, and uh, unfortunately, uh, my health, I was on dialysis at the time. And if you right. watch that show, if you go back and watch the segments that I'm on, you'll actually see me dialysis, dial, dial, dialysis, being on, di dialysizing? That's fine. <laughs> dialysizing myself word. on the show while we're shooting uh, because I went in f to have the surgery done where they put this hose in my stomach and then the hose ran out of my stomach and down into my pant leg. So I'd wear these cargo pants with a big bag and so you drink you pump up this is fluid and then it would absorb all the toxins in that and then it would drain out of this hose what a job oh my god i'll tell you it took a week and then i got so infected because i was doing it on set and which was really stupid in the garage and uh and so i got really infected we had to take the hose out and then i had to go back to dialysis but i don't i didn't know you did that, that but the, uh, yeah, what i was doing it for the show because you know i, I didn't want to go on dialysis you know because i was there for five hours in the morning right so i wouldn't show up on set till like 9 30 you know and, and everybody wanted to get started at eight so i you know to to, to uh to um help everybody else out i went ahead and tried this uh home dialysis and oh my God, that, that damn near killed me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you do something like that from home. No. Where, where'd you shoot that? We shot that out in uh, Franklin, Tennessee. Did you like it there? I, you know what, Tennessee is a beautiful, beautiful country. Uh, uh, I love that state. I mean, it's great. I, when I say country, I mean countryside. Yeah, sure. Guys, the, the rolling hills and uh, I mean the big farmhouses and all that. I mean, it's great. The problem is, is I was married at the time and my wife, uh, I flew her out there with our daughter and she told me, she goes, no. She I remember goes, that. She goes, you either move back to L.A. and quit the show or we get divorced. I remember that. And, of course, you know, uh, as, a as, a, as, as a family man, you know, you got to take your family over, you yeah. know, over even, yeah. even, even a show that, you know, that you're being successful on. And I chose my family. Unfortunately, I was divorced two years later. <laughs> so, hey, you know, you know, I mean, I still don't regret it. Seriously, I don't. I mean, you know, it's just something that happens, you know, nobody's fault. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're still really good friends, and, uh, it, it, and it worked out great. Well, where can we find you on the, your websites on the Internet? Because people want to look you up and see all about you and contact you. You know, I am on IMDb. Yeah. Um, I am also on Facebook. 
uh, you know, you go to my Facebook, you know, I'll, I'll friend you. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. I'm, 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 uh, I'm certainly no diva. That's your Twitter? Yeah, that's, uh, that picture was taken at my really good friend Eric Paulson's club, CSW, which is a uh, MMA fighting club. Oh. Uh, combat submission wrestling with Eric Paulson down in Fullerton. And I, uh, this is, believe it or not, honest to God, that's two months after my transplant. Wow. I had a kidney transplant in 2009, uh, 2009 September. Guys? Um, yeah, I, I know all. I know all five of those guys. Yeah, those are all my brothers. Yeah, yeah. there's Rick, and then there's Drazen, yeah. and then there's the and, Equalizer, and, and, and yeah, there you go. And the IMDb <laughs> with the beard. There's uh, my my. There's your there's your better half. My girlfriend, right? Yeah, yeah, your better half. And my Twitter. Your Twitter account? Yes, I have all the. I'm very social media. Oh, <laughs> but, social butterfly. What yeah. are you talking about? And now this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alexis Nichols, one of your Actors Entertainment hosts. Here's a big hug and thank you for joining us on Actors Eat Chat. We are now almost 6 million viewers in Chatter Strong from all over the world, and we really appreciate you. Actors Eat Chat shoots live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, from the Pepper J Production Studio, below the Hollywood sign in Hollywood, California. Want to see all of today's episode or any other of our other episodes? please visit ActorsEntertainment.com and put the talent's name in the search box. And go ahead and visit Actors Entertainment on IMDb.com. That's the Internet Movie Database to see more than 1,200 entertainment industry professionals who have been guests on Actors eChat. And social media is so important, so follow Actors Entertainment on Twitter. Our handle is at Actors Entertain. And join us on Facebook at Actors Entertainment Fan Page. And don't forget to like us. Those likes really help out. Stay tuned for our Actors Reporter Animation, which won Best Animation at the Telly Awards. Great job in Now Media and Pepper J Productions, and terrific singing by Melissa Suzanne. And now, a special thank you to today's guest. Welcome back to Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Rick Drazen, along with actor Paul Vincent. And we've had a really, really nice visit here talking about his career right. and his future and his past, his present, his next life, his past life, and our friendship on top of that. And I uh, just want to thank you so much for doing this with me. No, it's, I've, it's, God, it's, I've, I've had a blast. Every, just, every time I, really I come here, it. they give me a beautiful woman next to me, and I <laughs> ask for a, a really good guy, and I got you. So I'm really thrilled to death that you're here. Is it like looking in the mirror almost back oh. years ago? This is like looking at my future when I look at you. I'm so much younger than you, I don't know what to say. You know? So, but thank You're not you. seeing double. No, no, no. This is father-son yeah, team. You can buy us as bookends anytime over at Walmart. Um, thank you so much for being here. And thank all of you for watching. We've had a wonderful time visiting with you, and I hope you got some good information from us. And we're going to give you the nine-figure bye-bye. Yeah, because he's uh, cut his own finger off. I did. <laughs> see you next time. All right, see ya. Thank you. What's that? Actors Eat Chat Show? Happens to be my favorite in the morning. I want nothing but a cup of coffee, a bottle of Kahlua, six naked girl. Wait, no, that's not right. Actors Eat Chat Show. Oh my gosh. Hey, big Hollywood starlet that just happens to be walking by. Yeah. I'm not from around here, but I want to be an actress just like you. What do I need to know? <gasps> Kid, let me tell you. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a naive newbie like you, there's one thing you need to know. To get my first job, I lived in a slum. Beat out 50 other girls to play a drunk bum. I cried. My first agent charged me 30%. Thanks. Working three jobs and I couldn't pay rent. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. A shark nod my leg on a B film in Sydney. To pay for the stitches, I sold my left kidney. I finally made a union. Their rules were complex. Their piles of paperwork fogged up my specs. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. I'm an actor. Rather disturbing, but what's the one thing I need to know? Don't listen to the critics, don't follow all the terms. Forget that sleazy photog and the agent that's got cramps. Go to actors reporter, actors reporter, actors reporter. Actors reporter. Actors reporter. Actors reporter. Actors reporter. 
newsreporter.com. Learn the tricks and the secrets without all the sweat. An info packed one stop shop. It's free and on the net. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter.com. How can they help her? Career cues, union news. Makeup woes, advice from pros, insurance tips, choosing scripts, everything at your fingertips. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Dad, call. I just got a call back. Thanks for joining us on Actor Z Live Chat Show. I'm just one of your Actor Z hosts, but as you can see, I'm also the Actor Z Live video editor, which means that I'm here even when you don't see me. Actor Z is here to chat with you Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Hollywood Time, as I like to call it. Our guests include actors, directors, producers, writers, singers, comics, and others that are all in the entertainment industry. You can see previous shows at www.actorsentertainment.com and be sure to check out our guest index to find your favorite celebrities. See you next time. I'm working. <laughs>